God, he gives us the power of his grace to serve. Number five, we receive steadfast grace. Steadfast grace. He, has, he establishes, establishes and makes us Christian with strong conviction. He gives us steadfast so that we remain steadfast and unmovable in him. Once we are saved, he gives us the power to remain steadfast and not, and not, to, and not to relax back into sin. He stabilizes and makes us Christian with very strong conviction. We have the grace, the steadfast grace. Number six, we receive supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. The grace that comes from God. This enables us to do things we could not have done ordinarily. By the, by the supernatural grace of God, but so on those who believe, they can do things that ordinarily they could not do because of that supernatural grace. We get that in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. Number seven, we receive sufficient grace. Sufficient grace to be able to do the work he has called us to do. Sufficient grace. You need to see this Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 9, I read in verse 8 there. Second Corinthians chapter 9, in verse 8. We see sufficient grace to be able to serve the Lord and serve him acceptably too. Second Corinthians chapter, chapter 9, in verse 8. And God is able, yes, is able. God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That ye always, always, not once in a while, always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. The grace to abound, the grace to serve God, sufficient grace is in Christ. That's why the optic task we perform as Christians, there is always sufficient grace for us in time of trouble, in time of persecution, in time of, in ta in time of uh, challenges as Christians, we have sufficient grace to be able to continue with him to the very end. Christ has the truth that sets free. It's the truth that sets free. He is the truth personified. It's the truth that personified. In John chapter 8, look at verse, from verse 30 there, John chapter 8, let's read from verse 30. Christ is the truth personified. The truth personified. I read from verse 30, John chapter 8. Then, uh, as he spake these words, many believe on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Look at verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Say it to yourself. And I will know the truth, and the truth shall make you me free. If it is when you know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, then you are free. Then you are delivered. Then you are set free from all the powers of darkness. He is the truth for the foundation, and the truth as a fountain of life is the truth for the foundation, and then is the truth as a fountain of life. It is a fountain that flows into our lives and makes us pure and ready for heaven. It makes us pure in heart so that we can, we can be qualified for heaven. Even when we have done what we should not do, what, well, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what we, should not, we should not have done, even when we have done what we should not have done, there is a grace that forgives. The grace that forgives, it cleanses us and forgives us from all iniquity. It cleanses us and changes our life. That's why we need to go to Christ every day to receive grace to continue in the service of the Lord. Even though there are many challenges here and there, the grace of God is ever sufficient for us to continue with God till the very end. Look at Hebrews chapter 4, chapter 4 in verse 16. There we are enjoined. Let us therefore come boldly. Are you a believer? Always come boldly because you are now a child of God. You have been for your sins have been forgiven because you believe and you receive Him as your Lord and Savior. Let us therefore come boldly, not weakly. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may abide, we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. You continually go to uh, uh, approach the throne of grace so that you can receive grace to help in the time of need. The Lord wants us to, uh, to, to, to know Christ as Lord 
as our Savior, as our burden bearer, as the one who represented us on the cross when he died on the cross. That's why today, everything concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, we must be, we will be able to say by, that we live by him and we live for him alone. That takes us to the superiority of Christ to the John. We have seen the supremacy of Christ. It's supreme to everyone. It's greater and higher than everyone. Let's go to point two, the superiority of Christ. The superiority of Christ to John. In John chapter 1 again, John chapter 1, I'm going to read from verse 19 there. And this is this record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And, the, and he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What seest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of uh, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. And uh, as said in the uh, as said, as said the prophet Isaiah, and they and they which were sent were Pharisees, and they asked him and said unto him, Why baptized thou then, if if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but they are called, but they are standeth one among you, whom ye know not, he it is. Who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latcheth I am not worthy to unloose. We see here John declaring clearly that he is not the Christ. He declared that he is not the Christ. He is only a forerunner to declare him to the Jews and the world. This was the response of John when priests and the Levites confronted him and asked him, he said, who art thou? As he inquired to know if he was a Christ or greater than Christ, his response was clear. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latcheth I am not worthy to unloose. They were asking, are you a liar? Are you, are, you, are you that prophet? That prophet they are referring to is referring to what, uh, what was written in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 18 there. I read in verse 15. It was referring to what, did, uh, what God, uh, uh, God, uh, God said through Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 18. I read in verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up thee a prophet from the, from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall, ye shall hearken. Let's look at, let's go to verse 18. I will raise them up, up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So when they say, are you that prophet, they were referring to Deuteronomy. Where, uh, where Moses said, the Lord is going to send another prophet, a prophet who will, have, uh, who will be raised among the brethren, that is, among the Jews. So Christ is that prophet who came for the purpose of our redemption. No doubt the response uh, he gave showed that Christ was superior to him. The, the response he got so clear. He, he, he said it that uh, he is greater than me. His, his shoe lashed, I cannot even lose. Although his duty was to point or direct people to the Savior, that's John, that's John the Baptist, he confessed clearly that he was not the Christ. He was not the Christ. So among, uh, all, uh, among all men, Christ, uh, uh, John the Baptist declared Christ to be the Son of God. Although he admitted that he was not the Christ, yet Christ also revealed that no one born of a woman is greater than John the Baptist. No one born of a woman is greater than John the Baptist. Yeah, uh, John the Baptist bear record that Jesus Christ is greater than him. And Jesus also 
reveal very clearly that among all well, those who are born of women, no one is greater than John the Baptist. And made it clear what is uh, why he said this. Why he said this. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus made this, uh, this, this declaration very clearly. Matthew chapter 11, we read in verse 11 there. Matthew 11, 11. You can easily remember that verse. Matthew 11, 11. See what Jesus declared concerning John the Baptist. Really, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there are no reason a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Greater than he. He had, he had, uh, there the Lord was, uh, was revealing something deeper about uh, when, the, when, the, when the talk about John the Baptist, he said, all those who are notwithstanding, he that is, that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. He's talking of believers who have been born into the kingdom of God, those who have repented and they have entered into the kingdom and they are now children of God living in the kingdom of God by their faith. He reveals the benefit that we enjoy today as partakers of his death and revelation. How then are we greater than John? From what Jesus said there, how are we greater than John? We are greater than John because he was beheaded. He died shortly after the revelation of Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. Christ had not gone to Calvary at that time before, G before John the Baptist uh, went, uh, went to glory. And the finality of what he preached about Christ's sacrifice had not happened at that time. All, 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 all that, uh, all that uh, he said about Jesus Christ, those things have not happened uh, in such a way uh, as at that time. Because after him, many things happened. And so, but now that Christ has laid down his life for our redemption, for us who are living today, Christ has already paid the price of our redemption. He, he died so as to set us free. That's why we are greater than John in all things because of the benefit we have now. Through his death and resurrection, we have the benefit of salvation. We have the benefit of sanctification. We have the benefit of the Holy Ghost baptism. We have the benefit of healing and deliverance by his name. Because Christ had reached our death on the cross, he had, he had, he had put us in a bed, in a bed, in a, uh, on, on a higher level. Look at what you are told in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, I read there in verse number 6. Ephesians 2, 6. He has raised up together. He has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He's talking about the believers today and has raised us up together. The us there refer to Christians, those who have been born again, those who have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, those who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and has raised us up together and made us all sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So Christ has elevated us to the position where we are seated with, with him, together with him in heavenly places. Heavenly places. We say that today Christ is higher than all, greater than all, mightier than all. In fact, Jesus himself said it, that is, uh, that is greater than Abraham. And all that, and all that, uh, and all, uh, and all that that we, can, we have read about of the Old Testament of the prophet and all of them, Christ is higher and greater. Look at the declaration here. Jesus Christ says something there. The Jews were asking him questions, and then he answered them, and he told them something they could, they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't understand. John chapter eight. They could not perceive it. They could not believe it. They could not appropriate it. John chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 53 there. And, and, and that, uh, are thou greater than our father Abraham? They were asking Jesus that, which is dead, and the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thyself? Why do they say that? Because uh, when, he told, when he told them the truth, which is, so, which, which is very, hard, uh, very hard to stomach, they were asking him, 
uh, uh, who are you? Uh, this and that. He said, uh, the old prophets are dead. Who do you make yourself? And Jesus said in verse 54, Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honored me, of whom ye say that he is your God. 55. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him, and if I, if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying, your father Abraham, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. When, the, when he said that, the Jews fired back. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, of the, fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Christ has existed with the Father from the dateless past. Since Jesus is, great, is greater, as I've seen, uh, I've, I've seen now, greater than John the Baptist, greater than all the prophets, greater than all the patriarchs, is greater than all men. What should we do? We should surrender to him. We should surrender our life. We should surrender our heart. We should surrender uh, completely unto Christ because he's the only savior. He's our savior. He's our burden bearer. He's the one who can take us from the earth to heaven. He's the one who can wash all our sins away by his blood. And he's the only one that can, can deliver you from the wrath and the judgment of God to come. This is the day for you to decide to surrender absolutely unto God. What does that mean? You repent, you, uh, you turn away from your sin, and you totally give your life unto Christ. And you allow him to come into your life, to govern you, to direct you, to rule you, to control your life. Only those who surrender to Christ will eventually be confessed in heaven before the Father. If you don't surrender, you will die in your sin. But why will you die when Christ has paid the price? So today, we, as, as human beings, without hope, without any, uh, any power of our own to save ourselves, we need to surrender to the Savior and let him deliver us and set us free. That takes us to the last point, the sacrifice of Christ, our justifier. The sacrifice of Christ, our justifier. Go back again to Matthew, uh, sorry, John, 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 John chapter 1. I read from verse 29. I read again from verse 29. John chapter 1 from verse 29. The next day, John said Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. You see that Lamb is, uh, is with a capital letter. I mean, it's talking of a proper noun. It's talking of Christ, the Son of God. Behold the lamp of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Here we see the purpose why, came, why Christ came into the world. He didn't come here to be the president or, because, uh, or to be the king or to be this or to be that. But he came purposely to save us from sin, to take away our sin and then deliver us from the wrath to come. This is he of whom I said, after me, come a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come, baptizing with water. And John bear record, saying, I, I, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and abode upon, upon him. And I knew him not, but he has sent me to baptize with water. The same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the, with the Holy Ghost. And I saw, and I bear record, that this is the Son of God. Christ is the Son of God who came to save us from our sins. Go to my, look, look at that verse again, verse 29. It said, Behold, the lamp of God, which take away the sin of the world. Which taketh away the sin of the world. The revelation of the lamb here has been from Genesis.